Hey guys, we're back with another educational video on nutrition. And today I want to talk about some confusion regarding calories in versus calories out. So let's throw some shit up on the whiteboard and see what we got. So when you hear the term calories in, calories out, or CICO, what are we actually talking about before we get into breaking down some of the confusions behind it? Well, calories in is quite literally the food you consume. Okay, this is all the calories you consume during the day, your energy intake, because calories are literally energy. Calories out is a little bit more complicated. What makes up calories out, which is the amount of calories that your body expends on a daily basis to live. So BMR is basically the amount of energy it takes to keep the lights on. It is the metabolic rate that would be measured by me lying down, not doing anything, and seeing how many calories I burn. That's your BMR. Then we have NEAT, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. NEAT is a little bit more difficult to explain, but essentially it's all non-voluntary movements. So like just postural of me standing up, waving my hands around, fidgeting during the day, those sorts of small movements that you don't think about doing that are involuntary is NEAT. Now NEAT is extremely modifiable. In a calorie deficit, NEAT will drop as much as 500 calories per day in terms of slowing down your output. If you've ever seen videos of me uh, from dieting for bodybuilding shows, I actually talk slower with lower volume and I even blink slower. That's all part of NEAT and how it adapts to your calorie level. Then you have the thermic effect of food. So basically, your body is a little bit like a car's internal combustion engine. You have to put in energy to get energy out of the food you eat. It is not a 100% perfect conversion. Things like, uh, for example, protein has a higher TEF. The TEF of protein is about 20 to 30%, whereas the TEF from carbohydrate is about 6 to 8%, and the TEF from fat is about 2 to 3%. So you're having to put in a certain amount of energy to get out a certain amount of energy. Now I want to be extremely clear. You will always get more energy out of the food you eat than the energy you put in. There are no energy negative foods. Even something like say celery, which has been promoted as an energy negative food and people have said you can eat as much celery as you want, you won't gain fat. For practical reasons, they're probably correct, but you do net a few calories per uh, 100 grams of celery you eat. I think it's something like two to four calories per 100 grams. So very, very low energy would be extremely hard to overeat on, but in theory, you could. And then exercise activity. This is quite simply the calories you burn doing exercise. When you add up these four, these encompass all of the energy you expend during the day. When we talk about calories in versus calories out and creating a calorie deficit or losing fat, you must create a calorie deficit where the energy you expend exceeds the energy you put in. Let me be very clear on this. If you don't lose weight, you are by definition not in a calorie deficit. If you don't lose fat, you are by definition not in a calorie deficit. This is not an opinion. This is not up for debate. Saying that this is an opinion is like saying the earth is flat and that's my opinion. It may be your opinion, but you're a dumbass for that opinion. Now, what I'm not saying is that certain things can't have an influence on calories in versus calories out because they can, okay? And we're gonna talk about that a little bit. But first, I wanna point out an example of a drastic misinterpretation of calories in versus calories out. And this comes to us today from Instagram. Uh, an IFBB pro named James Kent. I believe I'm pronouncing his name correctly. I apologize if I'm not. He posted, the latest trend in Muppetry is talking about the calorie deficit in quotations. I'm not sure why calorie deficit is in quotations as if it's something theoretical, because it's not, but it's in quotations. So many of these skinny fat potatoes are chirping up and it's quite irritating. First, they begin by saying a calorie deficit is the only way to lose weight. That's because it is. Period. If you don't lose weight, you're not in a calorie deficit. And if you think somehow you can eat in a calorie surplus and lose fat or weight, you're basically saying, do you believe in magic? Then they pick some hot, famous Insta chick and publicly defame her. 
I wonder who that could be. To talk about something we saw on social media that people had sent to us. And that's a post from Ashley Bynes, who's a trainer in Australia, who made a post about one of her diet protocols. First off, I think we need to understand what the definition of defamation is. So let's go to Wikipedia real quick. Defamation. Under common law, to constitute defamation, a claim must be generally false and must have been made to someone other than the person defamed. Defamation would fit for somebody saying something negative about somebody else or something they said publicly on YouTube if that was false. However, if somebody is just talking about science and what science says and saying what somebody else said is incorrect, that is not defamation. Defamation would be if somebody picked some famous Insta chick, I don't know who, and said that person murdered their father when they actually didn't, or they're a known drug addict, or they swindle people out of money. That would be defamation. If you could not prove what you were saying, that is defamation, slander, libel. Simply criticizing what somebody says and providing evidence that they're wrong is not the same thing as defamation. Back to the post. Then he says, you know what the worst part about these people? They're not even right. First of all, calorie deficit controls mass loss, not fat loss. Alrighty then. Mass is fat, muscle, glycogen, triglyceride. Fat loss is fat loss. See the difference? Yes, I, we understand that adipose tissue is different than uh, lean muscle mass and lean tissue. However, that does not change the fact that in order to lose fat, in order to draw on fat stores, you must induce a caloric deficit in order to cause more energy to flux out of adipose tissue cells versus into adipose tissue cells. This is shown in advanced metrics. Uh, Dr. Kevin Hall has done great studies on fat balance showing this exact thing to be true. Once again, not up for debate. Even worse is that they don't understand what underpins the physio physiological capability to have a calorie deficit. Your nervous system, digestive system, and hormones. So you're, I think, I'm not sure what he's saying because I think he just put a bunch of words together that actually didn't make any sense, but I believe what he's trying to say is that if your hormones aren't in a certain place and uh, your nervous system, which I'm not sure what part of the nervous system he's referring to because it's pretty ubiquitous, uh, and your digestive system aren't in, aren't in good health, that you won't lose weight. Let's examine those claims for a moment, shall we? Hormones. I'm not sure which hormones he's talking about, but hormones tend to follow calories in versus calories out and energy balance more so than calories in, calories out follow hormones, okay? If you induce an energy deficit, insulin, leptin, uh, and uh, T3 all drop. If you overfeed, insulin, leptin, and T3 all go up. Unless you are saying that you're actually going to exogenously give these hormones, these hormones follow calories in versus calories out because they respond to energy balance. This is shown in many studies. A great review to check out for you, James, would be by Dr. McLean from the University of Denver called Biology's Response to Dieting, the Impetus for Weight Regain. 50 page review, wonderful. Goes through all the things you're talking about, hormones, and shows that they respond to an energy balance. Uh, as far as digestion goes, if you had a digestive disorder, one of the hallmark of malabsorption and digestion disorders is people actually lose weight. Now they lose lean body mass, but they also lose body fat. People who have Crohn's, people who have celiacs, these sorts of digestive disorders where people aren't assimilating nutrients well, if you're not assimilating nutrients well, you are going to create by default a calorie deficit and actually lose fat. So saying that the digestive system, I'm, yes, you want to be healthy. Everyone would like to have a well-functioning digestive system. I'm not, uh, I'm not suggesting people go purposely sabotage the digestive system. But when there are problems with it, it tends to cause fat loss, not fat gain. I don't know of any digestive, system, uh, digestive problem or a disease that causes fat gain. In fact, if you look like at something like tapeworms, there are actually people who will take tapeworms on purpose to make them lose weight. I don't recommend this. <laughs> so, because tapeworms cause malabsorption. And so since you're not absorbing as many nutrients, you lose body fat. Then he says, try losing fat 
while insulin resistant with a gut, which won't absorb nutrients correctly. Again, if you're not absorbing nutrients, James, you're going to be in a calorie deficit, an energy negative balance, and you are going to lose weight and fat. You'll lose lean mass too, but you will lose fat. Uh, I, I, this, this actually blows my mind that you said this. Um, and dealing with uh, no sleep, with a load of anxiety, um, gluten, dairy, and stimulants. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm not sure what gluten has to do with it, um, and I'm not sure what dairy has to do with it. Uh, the meta-analyses on dairy show that people who eat dairy tend to have uh, better bone mineral density, more muscle mass, and less body fat. So, and that's, a, that's actually a study done by uh, Dr. Stu Phillips, if you'd like to check it out. So, I, I don't get some of the claims you're making, but I'm gonna attempt to interpret some of your confusion and explain it to the audience. So when he says you don't, things like you don't need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight, what I think he is trying to say is that you don't have to track your calories to lose weight. That is true. You don't have to track your calories to lose weight. There are a myriad of strategies you can use to lose fat without having to track your calories. But if he's talking about losing fat and not muscle, we've gone through what the best strategies are for that. It's to have a higher protein intake, higher fiber for thermogenesis, and then not crash diet. It's very easy. And then as far as hormones go, if we're talking about insulin, which seems to be the popular one today because he mentioned insulin resistance, if you eat in a calorie deficit, your fasting levels of insulin go down and your insulin sensitivity improves, period. It's shown in many studies. In fact, he made a big deal about health. Did you know that 95 to 100% of the health benefits of diets are completely explained by the weight loss you incur? There was a meta-analysis done by NAUD in, I believe, 2014, where they showed regardless of diet, regardless of the type of diet used, that 90 to 100% of the health benefits in terms of blood lipids, uh, blood sugar, insulin, could be explained simply by the weight loss. Therefore, the best diet for the individual is the one that they can stick to and help them lose weight. There's no magic diets out there. I'm sorry, James. But just because you don't have to track calories to lose weight does not negate this. And any dietary modification you make that causes weight loss is going to be due, by, is going to, be due to either decreasing your intake or increasing your output. So people will use something like protein and say, well, protein, high protein diets at the same calorie level compared to low protein diets cause more fat loss and weight loss. Therefore, calories in versus calories out is invalid. That's not what that says. What that says is higher protein causes more thermic effect of food, which increases your energy expenditure, i.e. your calories out. What that says is not all calories are created equal. That is not the same thing as saying calories in versus calories out doesn't matter. I know it's confusing, but try to keep up. If we look at uh, one other thing calories in versus calories out critics try to hammer on is the second law of thermodynamics. They say, well, calories in versus calories out is dictated by the first law of thermodynamics, but the second law, which is the law of entropy, that more ordered systems move to less ordered systems. Basically what they're saying is the conversion of the food you eat is not perfect to your, uh, to your ATP, to your energy. And so because some of it's wasted, because it's dissipated, because there's thermogenesis, that invalidates calories in versus calories out. That would be true if we didn't account for the second law with these measures. All these measures account for the fact that Energy conversion is not perfect. The second law is accounted for. You don't have to worry about it. Awesome stuff. Cool, these scientists, turns out, they know what they're talking about. He made in his follow-up posts big deals about insulin and insulin levels. And I hear this a lot from the uh, carbohydrate, um, carbohydrate insulin model of obesity zealots. Basically saying that you can gain fat in a calorie deficit. No and uh, you don't have to be in a calorie deficit to lose fat, much like what James said, uh, as long as you keep your insulin low. Well, fortunately, we have a study that looked at this, a metabolic ward study by Kevin Hall at uh, the National Institute of Health, where they looked at a four-week uh, ketogenic diet 
versus a non-ketogenic diet with protein and calories equated. What they found was that there was no difference in weight loss. No difference. Even though insulin levels on a daily basis were 20% lower in the group following the ketogenic diet. If insulin was so important and the major determinant of whether you gained or lost weight, then if we saw differences in insulin of 20%, we would see differences in weight loss, and we don't see that. Now, that's not saying insulin is completely unimportant. There was a study done using uh, what's called Mendelian randomization, where they look at gene variants and try to correlate that to uh, an outcome. So for example, in the study that I'm referencing, they, some people secrete more insulin naturally, some people secrete less insulin naturally. They looked at those gene variants and correlated that to people's levels of body fat. Because what you would expect is that if insulin was the major determinant of body fat levels, that you would see a very tight correlation between people who secreted more insulin on a daily basis and body fat. What they saw was that insulin explained uh, between one to 10% of the body fatness. So that's saying it's not completely unimportant, but it's not the major determinant of obesity. Calories in versus calories out. Again, most people don't understand this concept. But anything you can say, hormones accounted for in this. If insulin or any hormone had an impact on weight loss, it is totally because of its ability to either increase energy expenditure or decrease energy intake. That's it. I'm out. <laughs>